What do you think of that tower over yonder? Jamie asking this question made me so ponder. How do you think they're cooking me apples and pears from this fruit truck parked next to these stairs makes up for the mental abuse that you put me through? I burnt your photos up, you dumb little fuck, so now I have to ask you now. Where? So much that I wanted to say, play the blame game and name names, but when I opened my mouth, all that came out was where? Not that you would actually care. But now I'm glad that I didn't. I was the bigger man. I'll just keep this petty plan to hurt you with words in my own head. But as I thought this thought, I was overcome with dread. As Jamie once more opened his mouth, and when he spoke he said, Just over there, beyond those concrete stairs. I turned myself to the direction he pointed. A tower that reached to the clouds loomed over me. Was it there the whole time, I thought? Surely not. The shadow of the building surrounded me. I turned back, but Jamie was gone. I started to regret the photos that I had torn. I found myself walking up the stairs, the structure staring me down. The vastness of it, like an ocean, it could drown. The doors opened to an empty lobby. No reception, no chairs, just the elevator and the stairs. Upon pushing the button, the elevator doors swung open. Empty. 46 floors, I thought. Surely not. The tower reached to space, but it only had 46 floors. Interrupting my thoughts, the sound of the elevator doors. Before selecting my destination, I was shot upwards a floor, catching my balance when I again heard the doors. I looked up, another room empty, by one detail. A man, a rather tall proportion fellow. It wasn't raining outside, but he had an umbrella. Addition number two to the building's elevator. He didn't speak a word. The sound of the doors is all I heard. Again, the elevator shot up like a bird. Only this time, the ride was longer. and the time it took, my eyes began to wander. The umbrella was wet. Water dripping on the floor. A puddle beginning to form. I had stared at the water for so long. The elevator shook. Up from the puddle, I looked. Surrounded. The elevator had made 44 stops, 44 new faces, all from different races and places. We reached the 45th floor, up opened the doors. The reception was here, for unknown reasons not on the ground, such an unusual place for the desk to be found. As I begin to look around, there were people abound. The elevator didn't move. It said it went to the 46th floor, but it appeared to move no more. I pressed the 46th floor. One, two, three, and four times I pressed it, yet nothing happened. Does the elevator really end here, I thought? Surely not. It was silent. So many people, yet not a single sound to be heard. Not a cough, not a peep, nor a word. As I stepped through the elevator doors, I knew I had to see the 46th floor. The last set of stairs. As I approached them, the building began to wobble. I was unsure if I was in trouble. The tower swung back and forth like a jack-in-the-box spring, structurally swaying like an upside-down swing. Everyone held on to what they could, their faces terrified, but not enough to scream. I needed to know what was at the top, the floor that the elevator didn't stop. I made it to the stairs, and then to the 46th floor, absent was the sound of the elevator doors.